Wow, look at that paint. Boom. Um, it just kind of escalated. What's up YouTube, Chris here. So I hope you enjoy me going through this tandem and just kind of nerding out on it a little bit. I'm also going to be working on other cool stuff like full carbon road bikes, silly gravel bikes, mountain bike stuff, you know, like dad bikes, X bikes, neighborhood tune-ups. I picked the bike out of the trash, click on the link here. Little restorations here and there. I will be working on a lot of cool and diverse stuff. I think all bikes are cool. So if all that stuff's cool to you, Please consider subscribing, follow along with all the cool builds, all the nerdy bike stuff, and yeah, let's get into this tandem. Here is the newest project. You know, looks pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. It looks kind of pitted and stuff, but I think a lot of this is gonna clean up. It legitimately looks like garbage. I've got some parts here in the back of my truck. Here's the fender, wheel. Obviously we're talking original tires here. I'm gonna clean this thing up. It's gonna be quick. Um, I'll slap it all back together. Take you along for the ride. So I was feeling around in the bearings, decided I wanted to give them a grease. And good thing I did because they are nearly completely dry. So uh, that's what I'll be doing here. Ooh, the suspense. Boom. Yeah, they're in really good shape though. So those will clean up. Put some grease in there and we'll be good to go. I'm also going to be pulling these cranks because they're supposed to move freely, um, but they certainly don't, so. Oh, that one's really tough. So we'll be getting in there too. <laughs> Reverse thread on these. Righty, Lucy. Get a flathead screwdriver for that. Bone dry. We'll just put some grease in there. Really good. This one piece crank will come right off. Okay. Boom. Looks really good though. I'm really happy with the. Okay, onto the front one. I'm throwing all of the little bearings and metal bits that I want to clean into a bin. And then filling that bin with something, like a brake clean or gas or whatever. Just enough to allow me to use less elbow grease. Right, after fully stripping this thing and cleaning it with just some, some light dish soap, you gotta be careful on these old Schwinns because. That's just single stage kind of painted on there and it can easily rub off. Um, this luckily was done before me, so I don't have to take credit for it, but um, it just, that stuff comes off so easily and you'll lose it forever. So anyways, here I am um, polishing it up now with just some Meguiar's Ultimate Polish on a dirty old polishing rag that I wouldn't use on a car, but um, it'll bring this paint right back around. I'm really excited to see how how well this shines up. It, it looked really bad, but it was kind of just in storage for a long time and it never really braved the elements. So it's actually in pretty good condition. So let's see how this thing polishes up. I am happy so far. This is coming right back around. Look at that shine. It must be from the seventies. I don't know. I haven't looked up the, uh, the serial, which will be right here. EQ801327. So later on, I'll look that up. See how old this bike actually is. I don't know, mid 70s, mm, late 70s. Final touch on the frame. I just put this car wax on it. 
it has really come around. Look at that. Beautiful. And I love this tandem because I love this junction right here, which is kind of fun. Just neat. These old bikes are just good. I like it. I went easy on the Schwinn. You can already see it's kind of, it's pretty delicate. The wax will help protect it, um, but light, light touches there. Head badge, same thing, because that black will come right off. It's from Marblehead Cycle. In Marblehead, Mass. Um, he lives in Connecticut now. But wow, look at that paint, paint, it's beautiful. Elbow grease went a long way on this wheel here. Here's where we're at. And here's where we started. This is the rear wheel, which I haven't done yet. All this um, surface rust in here, most of it came out. Also, these are the original tires, which is, which is pretty fun. When I took that one off, it just disintegrated. So yeah, most of the surface rust here, that, that looks a little deep, that might not come out, but um, a lot of this stuff came right out. I usually would do like um, period, you know, like um, not Kenda, but who does the Schwinn tires? I forget the name, but there's a company that does like the original like S2 Schwinn rim tires to make it nice, but these showed up in two days and um, I just kind of wanted to get it out. So they'll work. They're 26 by um, one and three eighths. I'm pretty sure they'll work. Well, we'll have to see. But anyways, they'll be a heck of a lot better than that. So now I just have to do the rear, put the tires on, and I think everything is polished up. So the back wheel came around pretty good too. Look at that. Ah, that's best looking Schwinn I've worked on yet. Um, but all of these spokes, they're all really loose in there. So I'm gonna go around and just T9 the spoke holes real quick and just give them a tighten. Just give them a couple of, it's not too far off. This wheel in the back here is actually a drum brake. So I'm not too concerned about getting it perfect up here. Um, because it won't, we won't have the risk of it rubbing against the calipers as you go. I'm just going to find the valve hole for reference, so I know where I'm starting and ending. I'm just going to go through these one by one and drop a bit of oil in them, chain lube rather. Okay, here's my screwdriver. I don't think I'm gonna be able to film and do this, so I'll just give you, I mean, that's just turning with two fingers. But so I'll just give them an equal amount of turns just to shore them up. So let's go with three. It feels like three is good. Okay, so I've gone around three spins each. So now they're not, they're not finger tight anymore. They're actually, they're actually pretty good. Um, I might do one more. And as I was saying, if this were um, caliper brake, something that was, has a tight clearance here. And as you're going, you wouldn't want it to rub. I would take this wheel off and put it on my cheering stand. But since this is a drum, we're just going to go good enough. And this wheel can take it. These tandem wheels are built for, to hold, you know, two people, obviously. So that's kind of why we're doing, that's kind of why they have drum brakes. Usually they have a drum and a caliper. This one doesn't, um, but I guess it's fine. Fine. So um, we'll see. Anyways, I'm going to go and just button this up and then throw the rim strip back on, which I've just taken off and dangled here. It's in pretty good shape. I don't know if it's original. It can't be. 
Anyways, and then I'll throw a tire on it and then we'll keep going. Okay, I've got everything all broken down, ready to go back together again. I was not planning on going this deep into it, but these things come apart with like two wrenches. So um, it just kind of escalated and all the bearings needed to be redone because they didn't have any grease in them. Um, they were just kind of clunky and um, the forks were clunky. They didn't want to go. And um, it also allowed me to just get access into there and clean them up a lot so they're not perfect but um you know it's it's a really old bike and i think it wears it well which is nice um i i don't you know i just i like seeing this old it's you know it's seen some stuff so it deserves to wear a little bit of it in my opinion so now all i've got to do is just kind of grease and put this stuff back um i'm really excited i i like being at a point like this where it's basically nut and bolt and then getting to put fresh, fresh grease and put it all back together. So there's a neat little idler pulley, kind of like a fidget spinner almost, that um, that goes right here and it tensions the this first chain here. Uh, and then the rear chain doesn't need a tension because it has a derailleur. Um, that's something I usually steer clear of on um, on old Schwinn's, I usually like to just, I, I like the single speed Schwinn's only because these, I mean, they're friction and they're pretty good, but I don't like this interface that much. Um, but that's, that's just me, it's all good. Every, even the seats are, are in such good condition. Everything on this bike is super mint. This is like a zip tie. It's like pre-zip tie, zip tie. I love it. It's aluminum and it's super thin. Um, even the chains, these are the original chains that came off. They're so nice. I mean, all I did was spray some degreaser on them and um, re-lube them. And even these grips, like they have this little extra cush, which I've never seen in Schwinn grips before. And it's actually pretty nice. Let's get going. Next up, I'm gonna mock this brake up. I say mock up because this bolt also locates that front fender, which I'm not prepared to put on yet. And this is as easy as... May as well go ahead and connect this front brake here. Why not? Okay. out there same deal with the headset so there's no slop but not so snug that it binds up the bearings that's about good right there this is the key lock ring so this prevents the 
lock nut here from affecting the preload on that first nut. Okay, so next I'm feeling seat post clamps. Okay, put the phone down and finesse those a little bit more so I don't scrape all that paint off. good almost done guess I didn't press record on that rear wheel but it went on this bike is getting too heavy for this stand which is kind of fun What's that? You made progress. I did. <laughs> it's almost back together. Ooh, that went on. No problem. Look at that fender. I can I can um tighten up that gap a little bit. Well, really by sliding that down but kind of is what it is looking good so far dang and here it is all finished cleaned up really well i am very happy with it i didn't change anything on this bike except for the tires, which did give me a bit of trouble because Schwinn used slightly different sized rims. These are called S7 rims and you have to get tires that fit those rims specifically. Twenty six by inch and three eighths by inch and quarter. If you don't have that by inch and quarter, then the tire will be a little bit too small for the rim and you'll have a really difficult time getting it on. The frame polished up nicely. I just used 
some car polish on it and wax. The cranks have nice patina. That's my favorite chain guard of all time, I think. I just love these old Schwinn chain guards. This derailleur was um, frozen stuck, but soaked it in some PB blaster and then cleaned it up. And it came around, I also cycled it probably a hundred times. Missing a cable end, but I'll live. Um, a little bit bummed that that's scratched, but that's how it came, so I'm not that bummed. It's all part of its patina. Even the reflector isn't broken, which sometimes they are. These bikes, tandems in general, usually have, well, at least the few that I have experience with, come with a rear drum brake. So it's this arm pushes up against the chainstay so that it prevents the, the hub from rotating around. And then this lever in here expands pads that are within this drum. Same exact color blue as my 1982 Schwinn. I just love these old Schwins. I love all of their cast components. I love the S stamps. I love the way that they just go together and come apart with a crescent wrench and a Phillips head screwdriver. I think these are just some of the most fun, simple, easy, and enjoyable bikes to work on. So super happy with how this one came out. Mm -hmm.